Crafty Gemini. I post weekly how-to video tutorials right here on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to crochet a washcloth and I'm hosting a yarn giveaway. So the washcloth that we're going to be making is called the Serene Spa Washcloth and I used a pattern off the Lion Brand website. It's a free pattern available for anybody to download. But remember that you'll have to create a free account on lionbrand.com first before you can access the thousands of different patterns that they have for crocheting, knitting and all kinds of fun stuff. I will include a link in the description box below that once you've created your account on lionbrand.com you can just click that link. It'll take you right to the pattern that I'm going to be using in this video tutorial. So let's talk about the yarn we'll be using for the washcloth. This is 100% cotton. It's called Kitchen Cotton by Lion Brand. I have a few different colors back here. It comes in all these different colorways. And I'll show you a couple of other samples of washcloths that I created with some of the colors. They're really nice and bright. Here is their pink. Really pretty. Here's their green. And from the little bits that I had left of over those of three different skeins, I combined them with some of the vanilla color and made this striped washcloth, which I really like. You can see the colors, they're nice and bright. Now for the yarn giveaway, I will be giving away three skeins to two lucky winners. So two of you out there, remember all the details to my giveaways are always at the end of the videos, but two lucky winners will be selected at random to receive this little bundle here. It's three skeins of the Kitchen Cotton by Line Brand, and you'll receive two in the vanilla color and one in this blue ice color. Real pretty colors. So two lucky winners will win that, and I'll be shipping that to you myself. So again, that giveaway will be open to all my worldwide viewers. Now, if you're completely new to crochet, no worries, because I have video tutorials that will teach you everything from step one. You can click right here on this image, and that will take you to my full crochet video playlist, where I have a list of videos there teaching you how to do everything you need to get started and start walking you through some fun and easy projects that you can make. So once you practice the crochet basics, you can meet me back here and the things you'll need to create a washcloth are one skein of the Line Brand Kitchen Cotton Yarn. You're also going to need a size H or 5 millimeter crochet hook and a tapestry needle. Now let's get started. And I'm using this uh, Tropic Breeze color, real pretty. You can see the finished washcloth I already made with it here. All right, and I have my phone here because I'm pulling up the pattern, it's called Serene Spa Washcloth, but I just wanted to show you the little ridged look to the washcloth is because you do it in a half double crochet in the back loop. It's super easy and I'll show you how it's done. So for the skein here, I'm just going to reach into the middle and pull out this whole bundle. This one has a real big bundle. Unwind this whole little bundle until I find the end in here. So here's my end. Start off with our slip knot. Okay, I do two fingers, bring them towards me. Tuck this under and bring up the loop. Don't pull it all the way out and then just tuck. So there's my slip knot. And I'll link you here to, right here in this video, I'll link you to uh, my beginner crochet series videos where I go into detail and I show you slow motion of the slip knot and all that. So let's get started. Our pattern says chain 44, I believe. Let me pull it up. Yeah, it says chain 44. Now 44 stitches uh, is kind of a lot, okay? So what I like to do, and the finished size that this, that this washcloth was designed to be is about 10 and a half inches squared. And on this one you can see that it did end up being about an eighth of an inch shorter than the 10 and a half inches. Now this is a large size washcloth for me. I don't really like them this big, but I was just making some samples for you guys and definitely I'll still use them. And I actually have a smaller one here that I made a ton of mistakes on so I can show you guys uh, common mistakes that people make in crochet. You can see how the edges are wonky and it's not square or rectangular in shape. And at the widest point here, it measures nine. At the narrowest end here, it only measures less than eight. But to give you some encouragement, if you're a beginner, don't worry if your first washcloth looks like this. Because guess what? It's still a washcloth, okay? It's going to wash you exactly the same way as another one would. So don't worry about that. All right, so let's get started with the measurement. I'm going to stitch out, let's say, 30 of my chain stitches, and we're going to measure it and see. Now, your chain stitches that you start off with are going to determine one of the sides of the dimension of the washcloth. So, for example, if I'm starting here, whatever your chain stitches or however many chain stitches you start off with is what's going to determine one of the dimensions, right, one side of the washcloth. Then from there, 
you can determine the other measurement by continuing to do rows for as long or as little as you'd like. So let's get started with some chain stitches. I'm gonna start off with uh, 35 and let's see how that ends up. And I'll take my tape measure and measure from here to here. So the designer that created the pattern for this washcloth says that they created 44 stitches in this same space and I was only able to get 35. Obviously that tells me that my chain stitches are a little bit more loose than whoever the designer was that created this project. So don't worry if your stitches are a little bit tighter or a little bit more loose than what it calls for. That's important when you're making like garments and hats and things that are, are gonna fit a specific size. But for a washcloth, if you're a beginner, don't even worry about the gauge. Just do a bunch of chain stitches like this and get it to where it's whatever length of the size that you want your washcloth to be. So let's start with row one of the pattern. Row one says to skip the first two chains, which counts as a double, as a half double crochet, excuse me, and then to half double crochet in each remaining chain across. And because we're doing half double crochets, they're telling us to skip two. So, so we're gonna skip the first two chains right here. One, this is the one on my loop, so you don't, uh, I'm on my hook, so you don't worry about that. You count chains. Remember the chains are these little V shape where they kind of look like little hearts. So this is one, and this one here is two. So I'm gonna come into the third one from the hook and I'm gonna half double crochet. So here goes how to do the half double crochet. So if you remember, single crochet, we never yarn over, right? We don't grab yarn. In a double crochet, we do. So because this is a half double, remember that it has the word double in it, so you are going to loop your yarn over first. So making sure I'm skipping one, two, I'm coming into this third one. So you yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, and you're gonna pull through all the remaining loops on your hook. It's just grab yarn, go in the stitch, grab yarn, come through, and then grab yarn and go through all three of them. So again, yarn over, we're going into our stitch, yarn over, pull through one, you should have three remaining loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all of them, all right? And you're gonna continue that till you get to the end. So when I get to the last stitch, you can see that I have one stitch left here. Just do the same thing, yarn over, go in through the last stitch, pull yarn through, and pull through the last three loops that you should have on there. You can, after every row, stop and count. It only takes you a little while to do, but if you're a perfectionist, that's something that you may wanna do. If you don't really care, you just wanna do a washcloth, then let's move on to row two. The pattern says chain two, so we're adding two chains here at the beginning, and that's gonna be our first half double crochet, and then we're going to turn our work. So remember to turn our work because I stitched all the way this way, now I need to go back this way, and I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna turn this over, so now we're starting here. We have the two chain stitches that we did, so that counts as a half double crochet. And then it says half double crochet in the back loop only of each half double crochet across. And you're gonna repeat this until your piece is measured 10 and a half inches or until you get the whatever desired size of your washcloth is, right? All right, so now we need to do the same thing we did with the half double crochets, but this time we're half double crocheting in the back loop only. And that's what's gonna give us those really cool ridges that we have in our finished washcloth, all right? This little front piece of yarn here is facing me, it's closest to me, so this is the front. And the one that's further away from me is this one here, which is the back. So this is the front loop, and this is the back loop of your stitches. Easy? Great. So now that we know that this is the back loop, this is the back loop, this is the back loop of my stitches, right? That's where we need to insert our hook and just do this, the half double crochets exactly how we've been doing them. In this first stitch, you're never gonna crochet because these chain stitches that we did, since we're already pretending that they're a half double crochet, we need to also pretend that they're coming out of the first stitch like a half double crochet would be. 
okay? So you gotta skip that one because this height belongs to that stitch. So the next space where you need to do a half double crochet is in this one, right here, okay? But of course you're gonna do it here because we're only doing it in the back loop, okay? If you do one here, you're gonna end up with one extra stitch because this one counts for this. And if you add another one, then you're gonna start already increasing on your ends and you're already gonna start off with a row and the edge of a washcloth that's gonna start going at an angle because there's too many stitches, okay? So here we go. Yarn over, skip this first stitch and go into the back loop of that one. All right, so let me show you that again. I grab my yarn, yarn over the hook, right? Skip this first one, cause that belongs to that one. And then I'm coming into the back loop only of the next stitch. Pull my yarn through once, grab yarn and pull through all the three loops you have on your hook. All right, again, yarn over. Notice how I like to hold my work. I put them between these two and I turn it this way because I wanna see the top V's there so I know what stitch is what and where I'm going to be inserting my hook next time. So I yarn over, I turn it this way and I push it in between the two V's and back towards my finger and against my finger. So I'm grabbing just the back loop, yarn over, pull through once, yarn over, uh, yarn over and pull through all my stitches. And I'm gonna do this to the remaining stitches across the entire row. And that's all this washcloth is, is just rows and rows of half double crochet in the back loop. Okay. So now I'm coming here to the end and it's kind of like a little jumbled mess because I don't have really defined stitches. The reason for that is because remember, we're starting and ending off each row with chain stitches and chain stitches are not as bulky as a full stitch that you get on the top of a single or double or half double crochet in this case. So you wanna put it between your two fingers just like I do, right? And be here so that I can see what the last stitch is. And I'm gonna yarn over, I can see that it's there's one here do my half double crochet, and then you wanna stand back and look. Does it look like this edge is flush with the bottom edge? Does it look like it's missing a stitch? Well, it looks like it's a little bit in and it might be missing a stitch, but it's hard to tell, especially if you're a beginner. So the best way to do it is to guess what? Count your stitches. So if you start off with 30 stitches, then you definitely wanna go in and count the tops is the easiest way here, one, two, three, and count them and see if you have the same number that you had at the bottom. If you do, then you can continue on to the next row. If you don't, you need to add one in or take one off or whatever you did there and fix that. You have to do another half double crochet in those chain stitches, okay? So it's a little bit tricky because it's not a full stitch and it's not really like the back loop, but just yarn over and here are my chain stitches. You're gonna yarn over and really don't even bother trying to do the back loop, just put it in through a loop somewhere, okay? For beginners, it's, I mean, it's gonna drive you crazy because you're gonna have to do this at the end of every row. So just don't waste your time, just stick it into one of the loops off the chain stitch and do your last half double crochet. And now you can see that if I pull this back, now the edge is completely flush with the bottom row. It doesn't have like that little gap going in and that little indentation that it had previously. And so that's how you'll start to be able to tell that you do have the correct number of stitches in your row. Just gonna repeat the exact same thing you just did in row two all the way up until you get as many rows as you need to whatever the finished size of your washcloth you want to be, right? Simple. So what did we do in row two? Remember when we started, now we need to crochet back this way. So we do have to turn our work. So the pattern tells you to do the two chain stitches first and then turn your work like this, which is what we did in row two. Now to start doing my half double crochets again in the back loop, remember that part, because it's important to get those ridges. I'm gonna look here to see what stitch I need to go in. This first stitch here, I'm leaving it alone because that stitch belongs to what? My pretend half double crochet. So the first one belongs to these two chain stitches, right? So I'm gonna go in to the second chain uh, the second stitch from the hook and remember again I'm going in the back loop so I'm skipping this stitch and I'm going to this one in the back loop all right so I'm coming to the end here and I want to make sure first I use up all the obvious stitches so let me continue because I still see another one here 
turn my work, there's one, the back loop of that one. Then it doesn't look like I have any more here. It just look like chain stitches. So you can see when I turn it this way, I'm going to put it in whatever loop I can get it in here of this chain stitch. If you grab one, fine. If you grab the back loop, great. If not, whatever. Just put it in through one of them and do your half double crochet there. And there's my edge. It's coming out pretty even. All right. Again, we got to the end. You can chain stitch first or you can turn your work like I'm doing here. Chain two, one, two. Grab yarn over. Skip the first one because it belongs to that pretend half double crochet. Got it? This one goes with this first stitch. So we're jumping into the second one in the back loop. And just continue to do that till you get all the way to the end of where you want your washcloth to end. So we're at the end. I'll pull this up a little, trim this tail, and this is called fastening off. This is how you lock it off at the end so when you pull this, the whole thing doesn't unravel. You just hold open your last loop and put that tail right through it and tug. Pull it nice and tight. And now, as you can see, my washcloth is complete and all I have left to do is weave in the ends. And I'm going to weave in my ends kind of like on a diagonal and just go up and down a little bit and that should be fine. There's no exact place on where you should be entering with the needle. Just find a loop and kind of go under it. And once you've weaved in a few inches, you can just stretch it out so it all lays in there nicely and then trim off the excess and there is your finished washcloth. So there you have it. You see it wasn't difficult at all to learn how to make a crocheted washcloth. This is a great beginner project because it's quick and easy. Remember to enter for your chance to win the three skeins of the Lion Brand Kitchen Cotton Yard. Make sure that you open the video description box below this video. Use the link I've included there to head on over to my website. And that's where you need to be to enter for your chance to win the three skeins of the yarn. I hope you all enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, hit the video with a thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. A big thanks to my friends at Lion Brand Yarns for hosting this giveaway, and I hope you all will give it a try. Even if you're a beginner, no worries. You can make all the mistakes in the world. You'll still end up with a fully functional washcloth. So I hope that you'll give this a try, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.